In a world where chocolate and fast food helps you lose weight, pigs fly, and Game Freak actually makes good Pokemon games. Pokemon games suck. If you ask most people, it's pretty clear that the community has some pretty strong feelings towards recent Pokemon games, and rightfully so. I mean, you don't have to look very far to find comments like these scattered all over the internet. Although there has been some improvements and some steps taken in the right direction, if you were to ask a fan of the franchise, this would probably be their response. It just seems like Game Freak takes one to two steps forward, while other companies take like a hundred steps forward. Their games just seem so outdated, like Wii or GameCube era games. Like, look at the games you're getting these days. Yes, of course, some limitations are from the Switch, but look at other titles on the Switch, like the reference people always make is Breath of the Wild. What are five things Game Freak could actually implement into their games to make their future games more enjoyable. Okay, number one, Game Freak, it's time. Voice acting. I actually enjoyed the story in Scarlet and Violet. I mean, let's be real though, no one actually plays Pokemon for the story. Playing Pokemon for the story would be like eating vegetables for flavor. It's 2024, like come on, it is dreadful how much dialogue is in these games. At times, it just feels like a button masher simulator. If they don't want to include it for every piece of dialogue, that's fine. But for most storyline events and cutscenes, it really is needed. Like, talk about a snooze fest when characters just start talking for like 5 minutes straight without any emotion and we're just sitting there left with these awkward scenes and don't even get me started on tutorials. The single most important thing I think Game Freak is missing is that sense of exploration. When we play video games, we want to escape from reality. We want exploration, adventure. Our childish nature seeps out. Our wonder and curiosity for the world we're about to explore gets us excited. We wonder what's behind that waterfall? What is this over here? What happens when I go this way? In older Pokemon games, you could go down this random route and discover a legendary Pokemon. But with recent Pokemon games with buildings quite literally being hollow and routes just being open fields or linear for the most part, adventuring in 3D games seems to have lost its magic for me. In up and coming Pokemon games, I want to go behind that waterfall and find that hidden Pokemon or whatever it's behind there. I want wonder, I want exploration, I want, I want to find some hidden treasures. Not like scattered sparkly things on the ground everywhere, but like actually like some hidden chest or something. I want to find that secret passage that leads me to a legendary Pokemon. I want these questions, these mysteries. Okay, number three is puzzles. I don't know why this was cut from Pokemon games. Honestly though, Pokemon push puzzles were never fantastic anyways. I'm not saying on the level of the Reggie puzzle in the Hoenn games, although, man, that was freaking cool. I'm more so talking along the lines of Zelda puzzles. Finding and entering a shrine was always a fantastic feeling, and that adrenaline and dopamine rush when you complete it? As human beings, we like to overcome challenges, make ourselves feel smarter than we actually are, and puzzles do exactly that. Now that Pokemon has taken this 3D approach, I would love to see a new gameplay mechanic being introduced. You could only catch in battle so much before it gets monotonous. Adding in a little extra spice can give this series some extra life this franchise so desperately needs. Number two is increased customization. I don't know why we took a step down in Scarlet and Violet, being forced to wear only these dorky school uniforms with extremely limited variations. It's embarrassing. It's like these grace. 
Pepper, I guess, and his grace. I don't need to tell you, customization is massive. I mean, you know this, everyone knows this. People will literally drop 20 bones on Fortnite skins or whatever skins to make their characters look cool. Pokemon Unite has outfits for their Pokemon. Honestly, people would lose their minds if you could customize their Pokemon to their liking. Nothing crazy, a little scarf here and there or some other variations and I think we'll be good. And no, I'm not talking about loot boxes, Game Freak, no. No, don't do it you greedy son of a bitches. For five, variety and creativity. I mean, I know it's a duh, like any game can use some variety and creativity, but you know what, I, you know what I wanna see? Not this. Scarlet and Violet actually did an okay decent job of including different landscapes, but I am tired of Pokemon always doing the same thing for the most part. Grassy area, snowy area, the desert area, the water area, the cave area, and once in a blue moon we'll get areas like these. Okay, Scarlet and Violet, they did better at this approach with areas like Area Zero, certain routes, and the DLC, but I would still like to see an improvement in this department, and please bring back diving for open world Pokemon games, imagine the possibilities. This concept also applies to Pokemon. Running into Pokemon in the wild feel pretty boring. Although some Pokemon like Applin can be found in trees and some underground, most Pokemon have just generic personalities. Some chase you, some run and slash fly away. At times, Pokemon can feel like mindless drones waiting for you to run into them. Legends Arceus definitely handled this concept better. I want to see Combi hanging around a bee's nest, Apom swinging from tree to tree, Charizard in a magma cave, hurling fireballs my way. I think this is the game we all dream of as kids, and hopefully one day, maybe, Game Freak can bring this game to fruition.